what's happening, everyone? This is Neil Turbin, and you're watching the Metal Voice. And we're, no, I'm not taller than you. I'm just sitting on. on He's taller than me. No, I'm not. This is Doug Pinnock from King's X. Hey, 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 hey. Hello. Over my head. Oh, stop. I hear music, music, music. Oh God. Over my head. And I'm not drinking. I am. Well, well, you can have a drink. It's a show. We're rocking. Yes, we got that. And, and, and you're my dear friend. And I appreciate you, Doug. So, well, thank you, man. And, and it's just an honor to be here with you today. I've been waiting to interview you. I wanted to uh, do this at the uh, Griffith Observatory. Yeah. Maybe we'll get there sometime because they got this cool little thing going on. Who knows if they let people in there anymore? Maybe just know. people that know Tesla. <laughs> then they got the fake Tesla. Elon Musk. That's the fake Tesla. Yeah, I know. There's a real Tesla. Yeah. And then there's like. I'm, everything I'm, that came after. I'm stuck with Elon. It's like Led Zeppelin and everything that came after, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's true. Because there's a lot of fake Zeppelins. It's true. And we have one right now that's out there. And fake Zeppelins? I just wish they would write some good songs and I would follow them. Well, you know. We're not going to name their band. We don't have to worry about they that. They just write shitty songs. There's some great. really, really good. There's some great bands from Japan that play Led Zeppelin. How about that's that? Good. See, Led Zeppelin Listen wrote to them. some amazing songs and that's the problem. You can sound like Led Zeppelin, but can you write a great song? There was a, a there was a band out of you Japan yeah. that Munetaka Haguchi uh -huh. from Loudness played on the album. It was Zeppelin, I that guy. and it was Zeppelin songs. Oh, was it? Was it good? Fucking jamming, good. throwing it down. Yeah. Mark, there's Mark. Hey, Mark. All right, he's busy, smooth but that's all right. We, we got an interview that's anyway. Mark smooth up in there. Yeah, he's smoothing up. I got a mother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, turn that shit down, man. I'm trying to listen to fucking Led Zeppelin. So anyway. Like I wanted to talk to you about um, King's X, and I wanted to yeah. ask you about you know you also did the the, the work with uh, Lynch and yeah. and also uh, uh, Ray Luzier. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, it was. Tell me about that. Well, George is just he. George is George. Everything about George that you think about and everything you've heard about him, it's all true. And he's a he's just a big ball of. Emotion and creativity. And George and, is searching for the tone. And, oh, he's always searching. He he never stops searching. And um, how about your tone? And, uh, he, Are you searching well, for well, the well, tone? Well, well, George, George just brought so much to the table, which was so cool. And Ray did too. And we all we all the thing about KXM is, and I don't know if any bands do this or not, but we we said the prerequisite is no one tells anybody what to do. Nobody critiques anyone. Whatever you put down, whatever you come up with, we will make it work. Interesting. And that's what I love about those four records, or three records, sorry. Um, it's because I had nothing to do with it. It's just I just put my part in there and put my vocals on it, and I loved what they did, and it was a lot of fun. So we're talking about KXM. flow. Flow, yeah. Your flow. Well, it's all about flow, and it's all about no ego. That's the problem. A lot of, a lot of people want it their way. No bu and, no bully, no boss, nobody no, telling no, anybody. No boss. No corporation know? telling you what you what, about, what it's underwear you got to wear. It's all about trust. You know, I mean, those two guys have are seasoned musicians that know what they're doing. So why should I tell them, "Why don't you do this? Let's try this." They know. And they're giving me what they give, and I'm going, "Well, I'm just going to play what I play along with it and make it work." I mean, this is fascinating to me, Doug, for two reasons. Why? Number one, because you have a lot of experience, and you know that that's valuable to everybody. Cool. And number two, I mean, there's something that parents can learn because yeah. because it does work like that. You can't control a dog, no, you can't you control can't. a cat, let alone kids or children. You you mm -hmm. can't tell them how to be or what to do or or, or what to play. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for musicians. It's like yeah. you're you're trying to constrain someone in like a horse in their stable and say right. like don't move, mm -hmm. like don't move. I'm trying to take your photo. Like mm -hmm. don't move. Like I mean, mm -hmm. people will say that. Exactly. But you know what? Sometimes you got to move, like the Rolling Stones. That's that's the way I see it. You know, you got to move. Um, you got to move. And you know, but you got. I, I have to be honest with you. You know, when I write songs. I write it, the whole thing, everything about it, and so when people do the songs that I wrote, I want them to do it like I did it. You know, so there's a, yeah, I, I think you have to just understand the difference. Sometimes you collaborate with people and make this great music, and then sometimes you have something that you've created in your head, and you need to find the people that want to go along with what you've created and enhance it the best way they can with the way they feel you interpreted it. 
So there's several different ways to make music, and, and all of them are, are, are legitimate. Can you tell me about Dogman? I want to know Dogman. Yeah, Ty wrote Dogman. So that's Ty his dog. said to me one time, it's his he, dog, man. he said, I want to write the baddest riff I ever can, could write. And he did. Dogman is like, the riff is like, are you fucking kidding me? And, um, you know, when he wrote that song, we had just, our manager had left us. And uh, we, it was a, a tumultuous experience. And when he left us, there were, we, he left us with nothing but a name, our manager did. And um, so we had to find new management. We had to find new everything. And Ty took on the, um, the the chore of doing that, and as a result of it, Dogman, the lyrics. It's all about him dealing with all the shit he had to deal with to get keep King's X going because we we had someone who took care of everything and then he left us. Well, thanks for filling in the part that MTV and VH1 left out. Yeah, fuck them. MTV. And, I and, love MTV. And, and then, well, you're from Texas originally, right? Well, no, I'm from Chicago. Chicago. But, yeah, but you we lived moved, in Texas. Well, King's X moved to Texas in 1985. We were five years in as a band and we moved to Texas. So how did Gretchen go to Nebraska, though? How did it go? How did she end up in Nebraska? Because that's the name of the album. Oh, Jerry wrote Jerry wrote the story. Our drummer Jerry. It's wrote all Jerry's the, fault. Yes, it is. He wrote this story about a girl who went to Nebraska, and he told this whole story. And it was so cool that we thought, let's just call the record that. That's awesome. And then we put a story, his story, in the record, uh, the album. At the time, vinyl people. God, that was so long ago. Tell me about your influences, Doug. You, you're a big Jimi Hendrix fan. No, just not a just little Jimmy. Bit. What Jimmy, a, what, Sly and the Family Stone. Sly and the Family Stone. Ray Charles. Because I've seen you play Jimmy. That's the only Ray reason. Ray Charles, Mavis Staples. Oh, yes. Um, Staples uh, and Fingers. Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia, See, I love I'm her. old as shit, okay? No, but you're old school. Yeah, I'm old school. Well, the people So take in, me back before that. Who, where's the Well, in the 50s, in the 50s, that's all I had. You know, there was no, there were no Beatles in the 50s. Take me back to the rock and, and the, the influences that are maybe blues. Oh, it was or, Chuck Berry okay. and Lil Richard. I mean, Little Richard is like, yeah, he's oh a, my God. He's a like, ripping and tearing dude. He's ripping and tearing, and he's treading this kind of flamboyant ground that, at that time. And it does take me back to Jimmy because he did play with him. Right. So. Well, we'll see. In his see, band as a see, as hired guy. See, when, when Little Richard was doing his thing, that was really taboo. Good golly, Miss Molly. No, no, no. The way he looked, okay. the way he acted, the makeup. The he was whole, a wild man. He was, he was that, that whole uh, androgynous prince kind of thing you know it back when everything was puritanical back in the 50s you know where yeah. the, the christians were like really hard on anything and so little richard was like really stepping out so it was the work of the devil back it then. it was the work of the devil it was all about satan and then jimmy hendrix came along and then prince came along and i'm watching all these motherfuckers you know and i'm going well let me do my hair up let me put my little shit on I'm like, look good pretty you know and it was what I, you know, they were a big inspiration. But, you know, rock and roll came along. Led Zeppelin came along and said, fuck all that shit. So what's the metal or the harder band that really kind of took Meshuggah. you? Meshuggah. Oh, really? Well, Black Sabbath is still one of my favorite bands in the whole fucking world. But Meshuggah took me to a place where math groove. Math? Math and groove. Okay. It's two things that don't happen very often. Because a lot of the gent bands, they're math, but they don't groove. I could care less about it. You know, give me a, make, can I dance to your fucked up math? Meshuggah, I can. Wow. I can fucking dance my ass off to Meshuggah. And it's fucked up and the grooves are spectacular. Any other bands that are inspiring you or that, that stick out to you today that, that were, you know, are notable? Well, there's no bands that, that, that are inspiring anymore today to me because I've heard just about everything that there is. Everything else is just regurgitation. But there's, there's a band called Vola. Vola. I love them. And there's another band called Sleep Token. Sleep, talk, sleep Token. The sleep Token. They are like, take the most, um, just really, how do I put it? Um, slow, emotional, almost boring music, and then it builds, and it builds, and you invest in it, and it's all, all of a sudden, it goes into a place where it's so brutal that it takes your breath away, then they can come back, 
to this simplicity that brings tears to your eyes. So you know I'm going to go listen to them. You need to. And Vola. Yes. And I have, I have a, another question. I don't want to keep you for a long time because mm -hmm. I respect your time and we just played a concert here. Bless your you heart. played today. Here yeah. playing Rock for Ronnie. It was we both fun. Did. I love Ronnie. Ronnie was amazing. I miss him. I miss him too and it's been too long. I wish we could just beam him back him. in. I knew him. We toured uh, together. Um, I remember, here's a cool story. I would watch him play every night. For the first three nights, I'd stand on the side of the stage behind the PA and watch him. The fourth night, I walked out and there was a stool sitting there behind the PA. And he comes up to me right before he goes on and says, your stool, sir. And I sat down and I watched every night with this special stool that he set there for me. And I said to him, I said, you amaze me every night. I said, you are flawless, you blow my mind. He said, I have to sing in front of Doug Pinnock. So I have to be good. <laughs> That's good. And I'm going, oh my God. You know, because Ronnie James Dio, when I first heard Long Live Rock and Roll, I wanted that voice. I heard that tone, it's like, you brought soul to metal. No one has brought soul vocals to metal like Ronnie James Dio. And they haven't, no one has done it since. We have all these math singers now. They just sing notes. Where's the harmonics? Where, where's the beauty? Where's the soul in it? It's just, it, it, you know, I, I miss it. I miss a lot of the heart in the new music nowadays. Now, not, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to cut the music new music down because kids are doing what they do they're em emulating what they feel and they're speaking to their generation so I cannot discredit that but as an old ass motherfucker I miss Aretha that influence in metal I miss the, the, the old school but you know that's the way it is and that's where it's gonna be so don't hate on me it's all good that's that's so amazing Doug and I really appreciate you uh, sharing your insight you know in that way because that's that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about yeah, that's I mean I really appreciate your experience and your knowledge because it's so valuable to, to all the musicians out there listening and all the people that are you know mm -hmm. that are buffs for King's X and that are fans and also you know just fans of, of great vocalists like Ronnie James Dio because yeah. the story is amazing yeah. but there's some other stories and there's some other knowledge that you have that I know because we've talked yeah. we've talked late night and we had you know we were I hanging out I was abducted when I was three you were and what? I, re I was abducted abducted by, aliens, by who? aliens when I was what, three from, was from, from East LA? those no, kind? no 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 what the kind from I, New I, York I, in no, the East Village? Or? no 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 I was three from Canada? And, no I was three three and, and, and came, you remember when you were three? oh yes I remember several things when I was three I remember I, I, I have this brain that just remembers things that were out of the ordinary. <laughs> I can relate. I was three. The reason I know I was three is because my mother was still living with me. And my mother left me when I was three. Oh my and gosh. And I didn't see I'm her so for sorry. years. So I remember coming back into whatever it was that I had experienced and she was there. And I was in her lap crying. And I remember it was dark outside. And that's the last I remember of her for years. But um, I was sleeping and this person came to my room and he had long blonde hair and he was very tall. Not like me. He had long blonde hair, he was very it wasn't tall. Me. Nope, it wasn't. And he had a robe on and he had a silver belt wrapped around it. And I remember he was very tall. I would I, abduct Iron Maiden beer if I could. Bless your heart. And he had these sandals Only. on. He had these sandals on that were wrapped around his leg. And I remember going out the back door and going up. And it was very bright outside, even though I had been just woken up. And I remember it was like, it was like, wow, it's so bright. And we're going up. And I, at that point, I realized something's going wrong, that going on that I am not into. And I remember I tried to get away from this being. And being? Next, being. This What's a person, being? A being. It's like, is that like rice and beans? Like no, you a person. A person. Uh-huh. And I let go. Not at a restaurant. No. You can't get no beans. No. Being. And I, I let a go. Being. You're going to keep me on. I'm going to stay on focus. I'm, and I, he, I'm and, just and checking. And he, and he, uh, <clears throat> And he uh, and I let and I pulled and pulled and I finally I remember I let go of it. He let go of my hand and the next thing I remember I was in my mom's lap. He held your hand? Yeah, he grabbed my hand. How he, many fingers did he have? I don't know. Like ET? No, he was a normal person. Was it like a dinosaur with fingernails? Point. Here's my point. I'm just trying to. Here's you know, my point. Here's my ask point. Questions. I used to think that 
I was, I was just crazy and it was stupid. But when I was in my 40s, I was watching Ancient Aliens and they were talking about the four alien races that supposedly people have, uh, have, uh, have communicated with. People that have been inducted. These are the four aliens that they talk about. Inducted and they, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No. It, it inducted into I fuck, thought, what the fuck was. I thought they only... Well, let me finish. Let ahead. me finish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And so... I thought they only inducted aliens. And so they showed the aliens. And the one alien was called the Nord. And that was the alien that I remembered. See, before that, I thought I was just dreaming and it was bullshit. But 40 years later, I see the being that came to pick... That took my hand and I went up into the sky with so that's why I believe that I was abducted because according to, if you put it all together it totally makes sense because it did happen anyway I don't know the outcome of it but I do believe in aliens and I do believe in all that shit. so so let me just ask a question real mm -hmm. quick and I'm not trying to be rude or interrupt you can be rude. I, I just try to I just try to keep people entertained because you know they're watching and you know they could laugh once in a if while they can't laugh at they the could, truth then fuck you they can okay. laugh at themselves because they might want to ask questions so I'm yes. trying to ask their questions mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about what would what would be some questions people would ask. Okay, well, so you so so they didn't induct aliens into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I think they do. I think that's where they get those choices. Well, there might be some bands that are aliens. Because they they didn't pick Iron Maiden, so I don't know what the fuck's wrong you know, with them. As for the Rock Hall of Fame, they induct fuck, aliens. Fuck them. They induct aliens. Fuck them. But are but the question fuck them. the question is Doug, is it interdimensional? Mm -hmm. In other words, we're talking about vibrational energy. Right. So different frequencies, yes. like in music, or are we talking about interstellar? So that's my question for you. I don't know you. if it's interstellar or intervibrational. I know that both exist in, in my mind, and I think they all have a valid um, place in our belief system. And I think that there are people that can actually say that this happened, happened to them. <clears throat> because the reason I say this, Doug, is vibration is very strong. Since you're a bass man, and you are the vibration. It's, it's, it's more than vibration. I, Everything I, vibrates that's alive. You know, when I, when I see the mountains, I get a goosebump because even the mountains give me a feeling, a vibe that I feel. I mean, I feel everything, you know. It's, it's kind of scary sometimes. So would you, would you consider yourself um, hypersensitive or a critical thinker, or would you say those things? I think I'm both. Okay. I'm hypersensitive. Because I'm hypersensitive, I had to become a critical thinker to make sense of all the things that I felt. Because I feel so much, and there's so many explanations to what I feel. And in my ignorance of not knowing the whole scope of things and I can make up whatever I want to in my mind and make it work for me. So I think that I feel and now I want to analytically make sense of it. Does so so do you think that people that are not critical thinkers, people that are keep it simple, mm -hmm. you know, kind of folks that just, you know, they don't they don't want to be bothered with details. They just mm -hmm. want to go to the surface and and watch the news and you know, just stay very very not go deep. Do you think that they can understand what you talk, what you're talking about? Do you think they can relate? I say to those people, that's where the fun is. Stay there and have a good time. Fuck all the rest of that shit. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna die, and whatever happens, happens. So all this shit that we're going through doesn't fucking matter anyway. So do what you can to have the best life that you can and enjoy your life. Because the rest of it don't. Don't give a fuck about that shit. Don't give a fuck about Trump. Don't give a fuck about Biden. Don't give a fuck about all that shit. Because at the end of the day, it's still gonna be here. They're still gonna do the shit that they do, and nothing's gonna change. Only thing that changes is in your mind. Can you deal with this shit and get on with your life? And the corporation still owns you, no matter who they you voted for. They own you, no matter fucking what. No we're matter slaves. No matter, no matter what you thought you voted for before it was. Dude, already. we're slaves. All we do is work and make money, to, to, just enough to to get what we want. That's slavery. It's fucking slavery. And here's the most awesome woman. I just have to say hi to Wendy. Wendy, Wendy you just gotta come over for one minute. One minute. Just a big hug. This is this is Wendy Dio. Thank you, thank you for celebrating Ronnie, and thank you for putting on Rock for Ronnie. This is amazing. We're just interviewing Doug. And it oh, God! <laughs> <laughs>
I love you. I love you. I love you. He's such a oh my god, you're such a talent. Aww. He is such Bless a talent. You, you are. Thank I you. love you. Yeah, I know. I know. We, 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 all we the, he's always there. He's always there for us. Always. Always. Thank you. Yeah, you are. He's there for us all the time. Bowling everything. He's always there. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Here, I'll let me get them for you. You too. We'll see you next time. Okay. November. Okay. Thank you, Wendy. Now, that's the awesome Wendy Dio. Here at Rock for Ronnie, we have Doug Pinnock. And I want to be respectful of Doug's time because he just performed today. go home. Yeah, exactly. And we can pick up... Uh, you know, in this conversation on, on part two, mm -hmm. another time. We can, always. But I just have one question regarding the um, the incident, incident that happened when you were three. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What did the person look like? That You said a Nordic? You he said, looked like Jesus. Really? The American version of Jesus. He had blue eyes, he blonde hair, long blonde hair. I thought it was Jesus. Growing up in a Christian family, to me, it was, okay, Jesus came, and something happened, and I came back. And Maybe. you were three? Yes. So did you speak? Did you did you talk? No, we never talked. We didn't talk. I remember several things when I was very young. I remember my great-grandfather, when he died, I was one and a half. And I remember crawling the floor, looking for him, and I remember my aunt's living room was green, and the, floor, and the, and the funeral was at my aunt's house. And I sent, mentioned to my mom, that. And she goes, oh yeah, I used to crawl the floor looking for Grandpa, or Pa, we called him, because he used to pick me up and rock me in his chair. So what I'm saying is, anything that tragically happened in my life, I remember. There's several things in my life that I remember. Other than that, there's, I mean, I remember from third grade till seventh grade. I don't remember a second of it, you know, but there's things that you remember. And I always believe that if a tragic thing happens in a child's life, they remember that because it, because the, 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 there's a disturbance in the force. And you remember that. You're forced to remember that. Last question, Doug, because mm -hmm. I want to respect your time. John Zazula, Marshall Zazula, Megaforce Records. You were signed to them. Mm -hmm. And you played for Megaforce Records. I was signed to Megaforce yeah, back in the day. I loved your band. Thank you. So tell me about your experience with John Zazula and Marsha Zazula, how that came about real quick. And, well, you know and what's so cool that Marsha loved us. Johnny wasn't interested in us. Marsha was just, she loved King's X, and she wanted us on that label, and she pushed and she pushed, and she convinced Johnny that we were something that, that they should work with. And uh, they signed us. And without them, you know, we might not have ever been heard. And Johnny we, was no pushover. No, Johnny was no pushover. And we um we had sent demo tapes out to every major record label and they all turned us down. And I remember a friend of mine who played with Amy Grant. He played drums for her. And he said, Doug, what are you doing? And I and I sent a friend of mine who sent him a demo tape of us. And he says and he says, So what's going on with the band? I go, nobody wants us. He goes, Well, why don't you check out this label called Megaforce? They're not what you sound like. They're a thrash band, but you know, they they're a thrash label, but they might like you. And literally, this is what happened. Um, I mentioned it to our manager Sam Taylor and Sam sent them a demo with his name on it. Now they were getting cassettes every day, tens and twenty of them, and they would throw them out the window because they were shit, you know, or they didn't like them. They might have been good, but they didn't give them a chance. But when she got the tape of King's X, she saw Sam Taylor's name on it. He was, and she knew a guy named Sam Taylor. She goes, oh, I'll listen to it. So that's the day that... That's the day she listened to it is when she... But if it wasn't for that name... She would not have, we would never have gotten a, name, a, a record deal. Thanks to Sam Taylor, and that's the day that... No, thanks to, yeah, Sam Taylor. Sam Taylor, right. and that's the day that, that King's X went from, from Little Richard to Megaforce Records. Exactly. Holy smokes. Rock and roll. You Thank you, Doug. You, you can't plan that. Thank you, Doug. You don't plan this. We love you, man. We love you, too. Thanks for everything, man. I'm going to go home We're, we're, we're going to pick up this more. conversation in the future. Okay, part two's coming. Peace and love.
What's happening, everyone? This is Neil Turpin. You're watching the Metal Voice. Yes, you are. And we the have Metal Voice. He's the cat. And this is the man, the one and only Marco Mendoza. How are you? How you doing? Brother? I love Marco. Thank you, brother. Love Marco. you too, man. And what about the people that showed up today for a great cause? Amazing, huh? amazing. It's not a beautiful thing, man. You know, um, for quite a few years, I won't boast, but I, I used to get the call, and unfortunately, I was busy. Uh, da, 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 da. Things are changing now. So after the pandemic, I'm here. I'm leaving in two days for work out. I'm glad to. Where are you going? Where are you headed? You're I'm flying out I'm on tour. To France, yeah. Starting Europe France, tour. Europe, France, Spain. Your Italy, solo band. With my solo band, New Direction is the name of the last album that came out last September. New Direction, and the one before that is uh, Viva La Rock. Nice. Target Mighty Music, and uh, check it out, MarcoMendoza.com. So Marco, we go back a few months. Yes, we do. I months. I, I remember, yeah, the one month that I was at uh, LAX and I was standing there and then Bobby Brown walked by and then Tommy Lee and Nikki Six and then the guy that I wanted to meet was you, Marco oh Mendoza, yes. because <clears throat> Blue we were, Murder, Yes, John wow. Sykes. Oh my God. That's yes. my favorite music. I mean, I love it's Thin Lizzy and I love music. what you yeah. do. Beautiful. And I saw you at Lava Lee oh my God. playing with Joey Heredia and uh, Renato Neto. Renato Neto. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you are you're doing Superstition or... Uh, living in the city. Yeah. So how's that called? Uh, what do you mean? Living in the city. Living in the city. Yeah. Living for the city. Living for the city. A boy is born in hot that Mississippi, surrounded by four walls and he's so pretty. See, that's and that's why I love you, Marco, because you just we go like on the spot and you're ready to deliver. And oh yeah, yeah, That's yeah, that's yeah. you. And, and I grew up with that music, and, man. And, and you taught me that because I, I watched you and I'm like, man. This guy is an MVP. Like, it's not just about bass playing. It's about a performance and singing and Thank the whole you, thing. Brother. That's very kind. And that, and that means a lot. That's like Michael Jordan type shit. Yeah, but you know what it is. Uh, without getting too deep into it, I enjoy what I what I do. I really do. And I might not be the best singer, the best bass player. Or the oh, best you're pretty fucking amazing. But I'll tell you, I'm very <laughs> comfortable in my own skin, and I love to perform it, it, under any circumstances, under under uh, under any capacity, because we're blessed. It's a gift, man. And I, as long as I don't forget that, it's going to come out. It's got to so, shine. So, Marco, tell me about your childhood and tell me about coming up in the music. Because, you know, in my opinion, you're a prodigy. You're someone who had it young and you, 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 you know, you're just doing what you did before. Yeah, well, thank you. To so the next much. level. I grew up I grew up in Tijuana, just south of the border of San Diego. And my grandmother came and took care of us before the music starts. My, my parents separated, so she came from Mexico City. She brought a piano. So she was a piano teacher and I was six, seven years old. She had a bunch of students and she started teaching and that's where I got to give her a lot of credit. That's where I learned how to appreciate music. Uh, she was doing concert classical stuff and I, I learned to love the music, right? I understand. She, she taught me how to listen to it and get inside the harmonies and the melodies and appreciate it all in all. So, so after that, you know, um, I started, I got a guitar, the acoustic guitar and started goofing around and we got the Abbey Road album and that was it. My brother and I went Phew. We got lost in the music. So, know? so let me get this straight. So, you came from Tijuana yes. originally, yeah, and you played in Journey. Yes. So that's how it works, right? You go from Tijuana to Journey. Uh, yeah. Um, get fast forward, give or take a few things, a little. Uh, I mean, that's reality. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how it is, and I really believe in this. Amazing. Man. If you really believe in who you are, what you bring, and you enjoy it, I think at the core of it, if you really enjoy it and you love it, it's going to shine, and the people outside. Like you, you have that. People outside see you, man, and you're digging it. Boom, you bring them in. And that's what it is. That's the bottom line. So um, I still believe in, in, in the, the music. The music business is changing. Yeah. But the I world. Didn't get, yeah, the world is changing and the music business as well. But I, I have to keep myself in check because I didn't start playing music because of the music business. I had no idea what that was. I started playing music for the music. And to this day, I still have a favorite saying that I say, music is its own reward sometimes. You gotta look at it that way. It's about the music. That music plays itself, man. We gotta pick this up again, Marco. I know you Let's gotta do go. it. I wanna Let's respect do it. that. Thank you, brother. Thanks so much for everything. You have my number, right?